Oh, hey, friends. All right, I got a good one for you guys. So this person messaged me. It was anonymous. I think it's a girl. I think it's a girl. We're going to go with it's a girl. I've been imagining this person's a girl this whole time. So that's just what we're going to go with. It could have been a guy, but I'm pretty sure it's a girl. Um, and it's 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 a problem that I think a lot of people deal with. She's kind of saying that she wants to like spice it up in the bedroom, but like she feels like kind of like uncomfortable having that conversation. And like, why is that conversation so hard to have? So like, I kind of like gave my two cents about how to kind of navigate it. And um, I hope it's helpful. I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with. So I hope that it kind of like sparks some fun, interesting conversations at home. And you know, I'm just I'm just trying to make the world a happier place. So. So hopefully I've accomplished that here. (laughs) All right, let's dive into this week's question. All right, dear Mish, I've been with my partner for a while and we're super happy, but for me at least it's getting a little bit boring in the bedroom. I would love to spice it up a little bit and try new things with him, but I feel so uncomfortable bringing it up. How can I talk to him about this without feeling awkward? Okay, so this could be super tricky to navigate because it's like you have these needs that you want to get met. You want to bring it up to your partner, but obviously there sounds like there's like this fear of like being like judged or rejected or like being awkward or not received the right way. So like let's kind of like break down the best way to sort of like talk to this person about it. And then once like you kind of talk to them, like what are the best steps to kind of like really improve your sex life and, and, and explore in a way that feels good for both of you, especially it sounds like one of you has like a little bit of a higher like tolerance for kink and this kind of stuff than the other which i think i think that happens in a lot of relationships so like how do we sort of like bridge that gap in a way that like feels good and doesn't feel awkward and makes everybody like happy and comfortable and all that stuff so the first thing is like when you're about to have this conversation i think the intention is insanely important because the way you worded this question and i totally get you're just being honest with how you feel and i get that but i would kind of flip the intention when you have this conversation with your partner because you said you know for me at least it's getting a little bit boring in the bedroom If you're kind of bringing it up and introducing this idea to your partner because and it's coming from a place of like, well, I'm really not happy with what's happening right now. A, they're going to feel obligated to they're going to feel like they have to do it out of obligation, not because like they want to, not because they want to be like open and exploratory with you. But they're like, oh, shit, like they're not happy with what I'm doing. Like, I guess I have to do this stuff. And and whenever it comes, you're you're coming into something with that energy. That's never the right energy to come at it with. Um. And also, like, it could really be something where it should it should be, like, fun for you guys to do it together. So I think an important thing to get across is that it's not that, like, doing kinky, spicy stuff is, like, better. It's just different, right? So, like, let's say – guys, I'm going to make a food – I feel like I'm going to make a lot of food analogies up, so it's just, just, just bear with me on that. But, like, let's say I love chicken, okay? Chicken is my favorite. I love chicken. I eat chicken every day, right? Now, if I say to you, like – oh my God, I'm so sick of chicken. Like, how did you make me chicken for dinner again tonight? Like, please make me something else for dinner. I literally can't eat chicken one more time. That's not going to be um, as well received as if I'm like, hey, like, I love chicken. I love the way you make chicken. Chicken, your chicken is amazing. But like, hey, would it be kind of fun if maybe we tried steak tonight? And like, let's just try it. If we don't like it, we don't have to, we don't have to eat steak again, right? But like, let's just try it. Let's just see if we like it. Something different, right? You're not saying you don't like their chicken. You're not saying you're not going to have chicken tomorrow. You're just saying that you sort of just have this like normal human need for variety and like, let's try it out, right? I think that's like a really like healthy way to to start to approach it where it becomes like collaborative and something that you guys are doing together. It's not, I want to do this because I'm not happy because I'm lacking. So I think that's really, really important. Now, if this person might kind of feel innately uncomfortable with this, they might then be like, well, like, why? Like, well, why? Why don't you like my chicken? (laughs) Like, why do you why do you need steak if when I'm making you chicken? Like, why is my chicken not good enough for you? I think a good way to kind of like flip the script on that a little bit is instead of instead of that saying like, well, well, why? Like, why is it not good? Like, well, why not? Right. Like we have a whole menu here. Like, why, like, I, I'm your partner. I love you. Like, we're given a whole many. Like, let's try something else. Like, let's try the special. Let's try the steak. Let's try the salmon. If we don't like it, we don't have to order it again. But, like, maybe let's just try it and let's see. It's something I'd like to explore with you. And when it, when you come at it like that, it sort of becomes, like, a little bit more, like, collaborative, a little bit exploratory, like, a little fun, a little, like, something you guys are doing it together rather than kind of sort of, like, how it was worded here where it's, like, I'm not happy, so I want, I need this if that makes sense. It's going to just kind of make that person feel a little bit like more open and you guys are coming at it from a different energy, like from, I think, a better energy so that when you guys are, you know, exploring and trying different things on the menu, um, it's because that person is is excited to kind of like try things with you, not because they feel obligated or they feel like they're they're coming up short in what you want. 
Now, after you bring this up, your partner can have one or two reactions. They could be like open to it and like we'll deal with kind of like the next steps with that in a second. But there is a chance, of course, that they're not and they kind of like shut it down, right? Now, of course, that's going to be upsetting if they shut it down, but you want to kind of like maybe explore, okay, well, like, why do they feel like this? Is it because have they were raised? Is it that they don't really understand like what I'm asking? So like, for example, like if you're saying you want to like spice up in the bedroom, like there is a broad definition of like what that could mean, right? Like that could mean trying a new position. That could mean you're hanging upside down in bondage tonight, like, and everything in between, right? It can mean a lot of different things. So if your partner is like hearing you say this and is like, "Mm, I don't know, I'm not comfortable with that, but like, okay, but what part are you not comfortable with? So it could be that you guys maybe have like a different definition of what you guys are talking about. So maybe kind of saying like, all right, well, this is like what our normal is. What is a slight deviation from that? And like seeing, okay, are you comfortable with that? And there's like so many things, right? It could be like sexting. It could be like dirty talk in the bedroom. Like I said, it could be like a different position. It could be um, blindfolds. It could be restraints. It could be toy. Like there's so many like things that that you could kind of start to introduce. I don't know, like obviously what this person's baseline is, but like whatever your baseline is and like what's a slight deep de- de- deviation from that because sometimes just saying like hey i want to spice up in the bedroom like blah 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 like that person might be thinking something like crazy where and that's not necessarily what you meant nor is that necessarily like where you can start maybe you can start small and work it up to whatever it is that you want to do that could be one thing i think another reason that sometimes people reject the idea of it is just because of like how they were raised i could have gone that way i was raised by an italian catholic mom and i remember having like really weird feelings about sex when i was younger like <laughs> and like look i don't have kids i can't imagine like how to i don't even know the right way to navigate that i don't know if anyone knows the right way to navigate that but i mean i was taught that i, I don't know if she used, she's gonna she's gonna listen to this podcast be like i didn't say these things but like <laughs> i remember just being taught and I don't know if she actually said these things, but this was my feeling on it, that like sex was bad, that you only did it with your husband and definitely, definitely didn't do it before marriage. And that I, that you only really did it when you wanted to have a baby. Like that was my upbringing on sex. And like, I almost also got the feeling that it wasn't supposed to be for my enjoyment. Um, again, I don't remember her directly saying these things, but it was just the feeling that I got that it was like, men are going to want sex from you and it's your job to like not give it to them. So like, I didn't understand in my early years that like I was also like supposed to enjoy it like to like I was sort of raised to believe that like it was kind of just like for the guy like the cow in the milk scenario right like they're gonna try to like get it from me and like I it's not supposed to I I didn't it wasn't clear to me in my very very early years that it was something I was supposed to like enjoy and like again I think we're all raised sort of differently with that and like obviously I've deviated quite a bit um and I think a lot of people have but I think some people are still maybe like stuck in those kind of like old ways because you know as adults we don't take time to audit a lot of the thoughts and beliefs that were created when we were kids and and sometimes we still operate um under those so you know if, if you do have a partner who's like kind of like apprehensive maybe like just kind of like exploring like why like is there some sort of like moral kind of like old belief system that you're operating under that that isn't necessarily like serving you at this point in life and can we like sort of maybe like unpack that a little bit to make you feel more comfortable make you enjoy sex more because that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be enjoyable okay so now you guys have had the conversation hopefully you guys are both on the same page hopefully like you're ready excited whatever what's next like so now how do you like actually decide what you're gonna do and it absolutely in my opinion again this is my opinion but it should be a conversation it absolutely should be a conversation i think it's something that's really important especially when you know exploring new things with somebody that like you guys are on the same page i think communication is insanely important to like have that go well um so you have the menu now you can decide what you want to order off the menu. My suggestion is start with an appetizer, <laughs> like start off small, like don't start with like, don't order the whole menu, right? Because when you start off with these like small things, it builds trust and then you can like work your way up to like the bigger things. Um, I remember I had a friend actually who, she's a sex therapist and she was telling me, this was like years ago, she was telling me when the, like when those books was um, 50 Shades of Grey or whatever, like when those books came out, she said she's had a huge like uptick in her practice because like women were reading these books or whatever and they're like, oh my God, this is so hot. I want someone to like Christian Grey me. And like they had never done anything like that with their partner before and their partner didn't know the proper way to do that stuff. And like there was like trauma that occurred from that. Like people like you, people who do that stuff and do it like correctly have an insane amount of trust in their relationship like they work up to that like that is like a skill set when people like 
if that's your aspiration, right? You have to like work your way up to that if that's where you want to go, um, which you could do by like starting off with like these like little things. But I think that's a misconception that people have is that like when you're like, you know, trying to spice things up or whatever, it's a free for all. It's not the people that like do like the crazier stuff and they do it well, have an insane level of trust in their relationships. Um, and that's built by like doing like little things. And there's so many like things you could start off with. So I would like kind of look at where your relationship's at and like, what is like a slight deviation from like what you're comfortable with now? So like, let's just say like, it's like vanilla land in here, like not even French vanilla, we're like vanilla land, right? So like, it could be as simple as like, all right, let's just maybe try like a different position right? Okay, fine. That, that could be something, right? Now, let's say you're like French vanilla, right? Okay, cool. So like, maybe you like, like sex throughout the day, maybe like send a picture, maybe you could like introduce toys, like, maybe like then you can do like, I don't know, like try like blindfold, like, like just like the restraint, there's so many things you can kind of like do, right? Um, There's actually, I don't know what it's called, but I know it exists. I know there's like apps out there where like, let's say you're, let's say you're not comfortable, or you're not sure, like, having this like conversation with your partner there are apps out there and i don't know what they're called but i know they're there you could probably google it where like it lists out like anything and everything that's like a possibility and it sends one survey to you and it sends one survey to your partner and it lists out all these things and then for each thing you can choose like definitely interested in maybe open to or like absolutely not and then you submit it and then when you submit it and your partner submits it it only shows you guys the one that the ones that both of you guys match on so like if you are not into something but your partner was like that won't show up as an option um and vice versa so that can maybe be like kind of like a fun like safe sort of way to 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 open up the conversation as to like well what's next on the menu but however you guys decide you want to do it my advice is like start off small work your way up and build that trust if you want to like eventually get to the crazier things if that's your aspirations and dreams and goals um that's cool for you but like but that trust has to be there in order to do it well i think that's a big misconception um that you see with people like who kind of like live crazier lives the people who do it well there's an insane amount of trust that's built um you don't just like jump into it all right so that's my opinion on how to handle this situation i hope it was helpful you must message me back and let me know if you found it helpful um but i think this is more common than people think like it's a, it's it's a hard conversation to have and i think when you kind of break down why it's a little bit difficult and you sort of like unpack all of these things i think it will start to make you closer with your partner and um hopefully it opens up the doors for you guys to have a lot more fun so as always, make sure you guys are following me on Instagram at Mish of Nutrish Mish. I'll link it in the show notes. Make sure you slide into my DMs. You can ask me whatever questions you want. I do the story question stickers as well as anonymous questions. I usually do those on, um, when do I do those? I do those on Tuesdays. So on Tuesday, you can ask me all of those things. So make sure you're following me so you don't miss it. And I will answer your question on the podcast or definitely in my stories. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I will see you guys next Thursday.